Okay, guys, we're back here. We had a big hiccup here. The NA player didn't show up, so we we got Jay to fill in. So it's going to say Lee on the right side. We we do not have enough time to f uh, rearrange all this stuff, or you guys be waiting here forever. So we are going to proceed with round two with a different NA opponent. We got Jay to fill in here, so I will show the match now. Perfect, so those three leaders are not the three leaders that uh, Jay will be using, but on the left side, Ray, everything is correct there. So this is what happens when people don't show up. It's a big pain in the ass. So we're going to set up a fight night, show up. But uh, Judge, they are good to do their dice roll and start everything. So I wonder which two, uh, two decks they're going to start out with. Yeah, and they both, yeah, I forgot to say, they both need to message me their first deck, and I don't know if they have already, I'll double check, yep, okay, I know, yep, I got both of them, I obviously, yeah, Android 21, and of course, if anybody knows Jay from Team Berserk, Sin Shenron is his deck, that's, that's about it, that, oh is yeah, it I, or is it aggro sin? Uh, his package, I know he tweaked it a little bit to go either way. I wonder if he is going back to his original aggro, but that is the main focus of his deck. I know the last time he played it at the top 8 of uh, the 3 mana circuit, he was running closer to mid-range. He was running more 9 drops. I know with his aggro package, he only runs, runs one 9 drop, just as, like, in case. But yeah, you are right, chat. The predictions, I need to cash those out. So, Matthew did take that. And then I will start the new predictions as well, too. Okay. So, this is going to be a very, very interesting one, especially with Sin Shenron. Uh, does uh, he run the Salzino Secret Ray? Of course. Well, there we <laughs> of go. course. Why wouldn't he? And there we go. And then instantly, the game gets turned on its head. And it's going to be very much... In my opinion, the Sin Shenron players uh, in their favor compared to the Android 21. But you never know. I mean, from that first match, you honestly never know what's going to happen at the moment. Very, very true. Okay, we got the five-minute timer on. I got the names there. Okay, you guys should be able to all see the predictions. Control Sin versus Baby. Yeah, that is the most sleep fest. That is... That is, you grab a glass of milk and you're going to bed at that match. Uh, yeah, yeah, at that point, yeah. Don't, 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 don't worry, chat. Resident sleeper on that one. But yeah, it's going to be... It, it's definitely going to be a really interesting matchup. I mean, what I do like about Sin Shenron um, decks, whether it's aggro, a mix of the two, or just control base, is that quite a lot of ratios tend to be different it's very more suited to the player like of course you have staples like um ice is usually a, a four of so that you can filter any ball that you want but when it comes to like the other shadow dragons i tend to see a lot of different ratios run for uh, for them so it's going to be interesting yeah. to see what well, type oof. of ratios he goes for well we'll know right off the bat depending on what he Actually, he is against Android 21, so that will stop. Uh, no, because the Rage 1 drop ball comes down, and he can go right into the other Rage, so that will by bypass the summoning systems. Yeah. Okay, he is going into the Sin Shenron ball. That's telling me that he is probably playing a little more mid-range or late game. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, t turn 2 is pretty much the tell, because um, he might go into the 8-drop uh, on turn 2. We don't really know. Um, it's a possibility, but again... It's pretty much going to tell the sort of pathway, especially it'll, it'll be a telltale sign for Ray, because um, he's probably still thinking, is it a control variant or is it a aggro variant? Yeah. Oh, I see the DVS Deck Planet official Twitch there going, Team Deck Planet, let's go. Everyone, I see a lot more EU cheers in the audience, but I see a lot more North American Timbit bets. I don't know. I don't know, it's a, it's a close the one. The channel points talk here, folks, the... The predictions were Hello. correct on the last one. The higher percentage was Matthew, and he did win. All, all or nothing. No, no, yeah. no little bets. Bet it all. Yep. Yeah. So he charges the four drop there. 
um, swing in to sort of fil to filter with the leader. Top five search. I see both of them as well rocking DB uh, DBS Broly mats. A little harder to see on Team the Berserk there. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's the nine drop. Yep, yeah. and so yeah, he's getting he the might, four drop. Yeah, so he might go as you said the four drop into the nine drop just to establish the nine drop straight away. Establish um, the nine drop, and he can lock out the leader for a turn, which isn't crazy amazing against the Android uh, Twenty One. It doesn't need to swing to draw, just popping tokens. But yeah. So yeah, he seems to be going that route. So he's getting the four drop out of the deck. Being able to uh, to stun lock the leader. Which is very, very good. Very good play. Yep. So yeah, then going straight into the nine drop. No messing. Snap puts nope. it on the board. No messing around there. That nine drop, you know, you've you've got to remove it as soon as possible. But then the problem is, is that, uh, you know, if you haven't got a way to remove the ball from their drop area, they can just bring it back and draw two cards, I believe, when you remove the nine drop. Yeah, and yeah, no god sealing technique on that. It came down nice and fresh. Yeah. He had two markers on the, uh, three markers on the unison, so he had the choice to, but yeah, he must have not had it in hand. Charging everyone's favorite blue-green multicolor energy there. So I think if I remember right, uh, Ray mainly plays into the burn strategy from the Android 17. Um, from the, the Super 17, Android right? Box. Yeah, the Super 17 one that just can bring out multiple of the burn ones. That's usually that's usually the tech I see going with the Android 21 players now. Which yeah. that is a really strong play when it comes out. When it comes out, it's game over. Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't have any way to counter player them, it's just you know, un, 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 essentially uninteractable un, un damage. Yeah, and it's burned straight to the drop too. So the best kind of burn. So a really good card there to note down is that he's charged tyrannical blow, and I don't see a lot of people. Um, play even i don't even see them sideboard it in sin shenron um i mean when the first when the card first came out it was slapped in a lot of yellow decks but apart from mecha freezer it doesn't really see that much play in yellow decks i think he may be running a two of of that in the deck since like i said this is the more mid-range version yeah it, it, it definitely looks that way now that it, it looks like a mid-range version yeah. as swinging with the leader is able to grab the ice shenron so any ball that he's missing he can just you know go and grab it so they're going to play Oceanus, which is a uh, burst, and then search top five. For an eight drop or less. We can't grab the nine drop off this. Only the leader can grab the nine drop. Which is important to know. Up oh, there. So going for the uh, Nuova Shemron, which is really, really good. Being able to bring it up for one energy... And being able to rest it to bring a Shadow Dragon that's four drop or less, uh, 19k or less, I believe, from the drop area. I, it is, I think it's between two and four costs. I think it's something weird like that. Because I don't think he can grab a ball out, but he yeah. can, yeah, he I, can I, grab I Rage. Right. Yeah, I think it's something like that, and it, um, it skills rage are negated for the turn. Yeah, yeah, like a it Rage for a Yeah. The skills are in the game for the turn, but that is perfect for uh, getting cell Xeno pieces. Definitely. You know, I mean, he might he might be playing more of a um, a control based strategy, but just out of nowhere, Sin Shenron can really lay up that yep. twelve cost super super fast and just drop a cell Xeno. Which, if he's already past three energy, if he does have cell Xeno, I'm guaranteeing he's going to wait for turn five for the full effects of it. Oh yeah, and, and then. And then leave up three energy probably for a cooler counter counter. Yeah, and especially with that Nova Shenron, one energy for potentially eight energy in total is really strong. Because he yeah. can play the four drop and pull out another four drop with the skills negated. Sure the Nova goes into rest, but it doesn't matter when you get a dual a dual quad strike that uh, takes three cards from their hand as well. Yeah, definitely. As we can see he's playing the uh, God ceiling, yep. Yeah, he's playing the Nova, but yet the response from the God Ceiling technique. Which 
which if he didn't god sealing that, that 100% would have been a Nova into an Omega. Like, yep. Nova, use a Nova effect, then pop the ball for Omega. Yeah, there's the Omega popping the ball. Yeah, that 100% would have happened there, and that would have been 12 energy there. This is, for, for me, I, I know that a lot of people really rate Oceanus, and while she is pretty much a staple in Sinchenron, this new 8 drop that they got from um, the set 12 is just... That's what turned the deck aggro. Yeah, like, yeah. Sure, yeah, rage and everything, but giving rage effect to that guy, making him yeah. crit extra 5k and drawing a life, which Sin, one of the main problems with Sin, like it couldn't be aggro before, was having to awaken it's early with time. mech... Yeah, the only way to awaken early was with Meki Ka uh, Kabura or people attacking, which for turn four is not early. Yeah, definitely. And then they only, I think they gave that Goku Black Unison where you could play a specified four cost Unison yeah, on turn you can three. Turn earlier, yeah. yeah, and then it's like, you know what? No, we'll just actually give you something completely busted here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the best thing to note as well about the eight drop is that even if you're not going for an aggro strategy, just keep removing the Oceanus, and it's just a barrier block at 30k. Yeah, that's n another thing too, being completely uh, safe there. So as we can see there, with Ray charging the Super 17... Uh, pseudo check land goes in active mode. Uh, yeah, really, perfect really for that deck. Yep, big big boost. So there's another one of the one drop. Your favorite little one drop. Yeah, there we go. Getting four more. Uh, getting four clone tokens per turn now. Yep. And they can attack really from him as well as the unison plus two. Yep, definitely. His skills are negated for the turn, but it will activate on the opponent's turn anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, pretty much. doesn't really matter. He's still getting the full value out of it. Yep. And yeah, check going on there that... <laughs> yeah, we did, did we even pick up on that? That... Ray did not charge last turn. I thought that he just was... when he when he tapped the Android twenty one that there was just an energy underneath. No, only two energy. Oh wow! I I, I thought for sure there was something underneath. Must have needed all those pieces. Well, he's gonna get the energy back right now anyway. I mean, I I'm not gonna. I've seen Ray do some what other people would consider questionable plays, but. Some, I'll tell you with Ray, there's some method to the madness with some of his stuff. Again, I probably guess that every single card in his hand he wanted to keep as part of a strategy. Um, not a lot of people would really have the balls to skip charge, but you know, Ray's a really unconventional player at times, and he can uh, he can come away with some uh, pretty uh, you know pr pretty surprising methods of play. Yeah, that hurt there though. Charging the super combo off the Android uh, 16, yeah. which now that I'm thinking about it, that tyrannical blow is actually pretty good there. Yeah, definitely. Negating the 16 skills coming down, making it virtually useless, and then being able to negate something else for the turn as well. Yeah, everyone put an F in the chat for the super combo going into life there. I mean, into energy. Three life left on the side of Ray, and we got uh, five on Jay's side here. Yep, of course Jay would have the white sleeves on the white map. Yeah, of course, blinding. Yeah, blinding. He's, he's not feeling right for the, the yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here wearing glasses, having yep. to squint. Uh, better than the straw blade effect we had last time, but we're... Uh, yeah, very true. Hey, very, he's, he's, he's filling in. It's the... Uh, True, I'm not expecting to have the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me look at these bets here. It looks like we got 65% going for Jay and 35 for Ray here. Okay. Mm, Let's see. Oh, Meki Kabura. That looks like an Awaken. Yeah, so he's Awaken. He's on 5 life. It's a really good life total to have with Sin. Be being above 4 when you drop the Unison is always good. Um, you know, especially with Sin Shemron when he gets through to the old strategy of getting to turn 6. It's just super hard when they just tap 6 every turn. 
to you know just bring out an entire board and flood the board for just films like in very much an insurmountable odds to sort of come up against. Got a D magic there though. From Ray. Okay, let's uh it's got two energy up now. One energy could go into another Nova, but he knows that two energy being up, that there's no way he's going to kill with Celzino. Unless he strips his hand. Yeah, pretty much. So pretty much from the looks of things, it looks like the Sim player is going to be in control here. Obviously not being able to like force it, forcing himself to go to four, uh, sorry to three to awaken is really good. Just being able to drop the Mechagabora means that you know it's going to take more burn from Ray to. Um... Okay, Ray with possible only one more super combo possibly left. Yeah, exactly. He's burned through them pretty quick. Yep. Oh, is this an arrival we smell here? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. The new Android six, well, is the, the the newest Android sixteen SR. Yeah, we probably got Tom Smith going nuts in the chat seeing Android sixteen yeah, being he, played. Tom will be going nuts over this one. This feel like at this point it's his uh it's his ace card at the moment. Yep. Just an amazing card for the value of two energy. It's going to put in some real work for Ray. Help him try and get back into this. Yeah, how many cards does it look like Ray's got there? I think Sin still has a slightly larger hand. Yeah, I think Sin's got like, like maybe seven. I think Ray's just a little smaller than that. It's quite hard to tell though. But the Sin player obviously sitting in a great position, you know, just... He's got a, bl a blocker unison that rests the card. He's got a revenge blocker. And then he's got an 8-drop eight, eight 30k that could turn itself into a blocker. So he's sitting pretty tight on five life. Not going to feel too threatened. Have to be thinking next turn maybe is he going to drop a card and maybe go into a Salzino now that Ray's in um in death range. In death range, and he did subtract a lot from his hand there between the plays, and negates, and the super combos. Yeah, burning through his hand as well, and uh, with him being at five, obviously he gets the full snipe effect. He could, he could just go for it, but he might just, you know, he might. Oh, just he's wait stealing. And six. I think does that Android sixteen doesn't have barrier, does it? I don't he, think. Yeah, so. he uh, is yeah. sniping it. Oh, he's like, okay. oh yeah, that's a good card. I'm taking it, buddy. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good card. Uh, I don't really want to pay for that card, so can uh, I have it? Please? Yeah. And it t it is a green card as well too, so that can be uh, successor fodder. Um, it's it's going to be... Green, it's green-blue, right? I don't think you can use its successor on green-blue, can you? I know green-yellow in general, like green and yellow. I don't think it has to be mono-colored, though. So, I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't, I'm... I don't know. I, can't, I, I, think, I think it's green-yellow or green-yellow. Uh, Twitch chat, I'm I, I'm on the right lines. Am I wrong? I'm sorry if I'm wrong. It would it would make sense. It would make sense, but this game doesn't make sense half the time. So yeah, green, but green yeah, blue can't be used. Can't be used yeah. Okay, the blue is tainting it. Yeah. If we know one thing about Dragon Ball, blue is 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 always going to be the worst color. It's never ever had a good card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> so we've taken what, you know, Ray put a lot into bringing that Android 16 down and just being able to essentially remove it by just removing your unison, not really putting any card, you know, putting any resources into it. You know, he, he won that trade flat out. That's, that, that's going to be really hurtful to um, Ray's overall strategy. It's a key component to the deck. It's a really, really good card. So, it's going to be really, really hard for Ray to 
try and get back into this, especially with the energy that he's on. Obviously, the higher the energy he's at um, is when Android 21 shines. Okay, he did take a life from putting yeah. the ice to the drop, which not really yeah. getting an effect. Ah, no there's... Vienna, more filter. Yeah, he must have drew that from his life where he 100% would have used that first. Yeah, I suppose he just wants to filter through his deck as much as possible. Yeah, because right there, if he had that... If he had that first, that might have been game. Because he would have put that to the drop, got the haze to the drop as well too, and then had a 35 double striker on the board. Ah, uh, sorry, 30k double strike on the board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you've just got to make the best of your situations. I mean, I don't know if he plays a chomper. You know, he might play a chomper and just dump it on this. Not too sure. Yeah. Don't think he... I don't think many sin lists play chomper, but you know. If so, it might be like a one of. Yeah, just exactly. It in. Yeah, pseudo secret rare. He did wait, any combo seven drag. Yeah, the triple strike. That's what he was looking for. Okay. There it is. Tempting yeah, to play the it, triple yeah. strike. I, was, oh, I, no I, I, didn't, I didn't think he'd run it with how long it was taking him to see it, but he's timed it just about right. So he's going to remove seven, seven dragon, dragon, draw a card, and he gets a third. I believe it's a thirty k, right? It's a thirty k triple strike. Yep. So that's thirty k triple yeah. strike and no option for a. And that's game. That's hey, that's game. game one. That was pretty swift. There seemed to be an error with the charge. I, I don't quite understand what went on with the charge scenario there. But nevertheless, it was, you know, just Sin Shemron doing an absolute clinic. Just showing why the deck's still so good. Yep. And for me, and for me probably the second best yellow deck. Um, probably just underneath Mecha Freezer, just because of the versatility that Mecha Freezer has. But it's nothing to snuff at with Sin Shemron. I mean, Sin Shemron's an incredible deck. Being able to pivot on a whim between aggro and control. Um, just being able to be piloted pretty perfectly there. Yeah, that's. I think that Sin deck is a little too overtooled. I think. I think what the problem was when Set Ten, when the first like Sin stuff came out, they did. They it wasn't even a deck. Like it has two dragons in it, and I think they might have felt bad, and they just overtooled. Like Bandai might have felt bad and just overtooled the deck too much. But I will get uh, if the judge can tell them to send me their second leader choices there. And yeah, let's see. You know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how Ray reacts to that. If he's able to bounce back, or you know, maybe he might be a little bit hurt by how that game went, or he might feel an extra bit of determination to do a bit well, a bit, a bit better on the um, on the next match with the deck that he picks. It's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here. Okay. Let's see what the round two decks will be. Let's waiting for the messages. Yeah, it's it, it's going to be interesting where they go from here. Definitely. Did you just switch mics? You sound a lot clearer. Oh, I sound a lot clearer. Uh, yeah, I, I just I just quickly took it in and out and just recalibrated it real quick. Yeah, you sound crispy now. Oh, Twitch chat. Do I sound do I sound crispier? Crispy as fuck. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Hey. Just always, boys, when you got a problem, take it out, put it back in. In any situation. In any situation. Wink, wink. Brown Magician 11. Can I just say those Team Deck Planet mats with the characters are clean AF. They are indeed, sir. They are indeed. Oh, 100%. They are clean, but those Team Berserk mats as well, they're a little harder oh, to see yeah. with the blinding light there, but the... Uh... Yeah, Broly yeah, taken. Yeah, that match is insane with the Broly artwork. Insane. Okay, so I got I got Ray's deck here, and Jay just needs to mess with me his deck that he will be using. And yeah, he did perfect. They are good to start. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see 
Okay, what do you think? What do you think? You, you won't know what's on Jay's side since it's Lee, but oh, there you go. Red Broly and Blue Baby. Yeah, so AOD. Oh, no, he's gone straight into the Blue Baby. So this, for me, I think he's Ray's best deck. Um, is it with the Blue Baby? I mean, I know a lot of people, me included, aren't really a fan of Blue Baby. It's a, you know, it's, it's very much a resident sleeper deck, but I mean, the deck's good, what it offers, just the control that it's able to offer, you know, the security, the field spell that you know, reduces cost making somewhat okay counter cards. Absolutely insane. You know, you've got Metriorp, the which basically turns into a free negate and a body on board, the 15k. Um UI Goku becomes a three drop. Um, yep. it becomes a two drop, two I drop. believe. Yep. It's just an insane value that the deck really offers and just being able to draw a lot of cards through the Overlord mechanic and servant. It's something that's for me, it's carrying blue at the moment in the meta, definitely. Yeah, that's... To be fair, that was another deck where I'm like, oh yeah, that's weird. I, you literally don't play, you wait for your opponent to play and do so. That was a deck that I was attracted to when it first came out. I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta play this stuff. And then it, it actually ended up being completely extremely good to the point of being busted with some of the stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, they, 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 they have definitely got to be careful in the future printing cards. They've always, again, got to kind of uh -huh. keep it in mind. With the reduced cost. Yeah, that... Um, good thing, though, that the Baby Ape being specified cost of 5 not being able to be reduced by the field, because that's just another headache that that deck would have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, it's going to be interesting here um, with the Red Broly player. Now, the one thing that the Red Broly player has got to watch out for is that while it does for me have the high ceiling and, and has what, what, what you know what a lot, a lot of people have coined the term as it's got the god hand where like it's got if it has the key six cards in its hand it can kind of just go like you know i win the game because the it, the ceiling that it can go to is just insane with the hand destruction and the big crit bodies on board but the thing about blue especially with blue baby being able to counterplay the swap uh -huh. chain before he awakens and the one drops and the vampers and stuff like that you know, the longer the game goes, the worse Red Broly really gets. Yeah, and Red Broly too, critting himself down. Sure, yeah, he's exactly. getting a big, uh, like a bigger hand, like taking his own life. But since Ray does get choice here, he most certainly is going to go first, charge an energy, maybe an intersecting fates. If he gets, since he gets a turn two first, as long as he hard milled for the the baby counter play where it's four cost less goes directly to the bottom of the deck that will shut down the chain really hard and he'll have to crit another life for a broly and a ba like that really slows down deck oh he's got the janimba chain in here okay i like that i like that yeah so it's something he's been toying around with um uh, with using the janimba chain um just for like an added bit of aggro it's just you know he, he likes to have a little bit of spice with the deck. He doesn't like to just play, you know, the the the, the, the status quo. So it's going to be interesting to sort of see how it battles against Broly, but it'll be pretty good. I mean, if you're able to counterplay threats that Broly's playing, and then just being able to play some Janemba cards down on your own and sort of crit them down, because they're already critting themselves out, you should point it earlier, it can be in a lot of hurt for a, a deck with a small hand size as Broly. Yeah. I Honestly, for this match, I, I know I'm Team Berserk here, but... I think I might have to go with the baby being favored here, just from the reason of going first. Going first against, I've played this match a few times on the being the baby player, and if you can get past, if you have that counterplay, that bottom decks one of their uh, four drops or three drops, which most likely four drop because Jay here is probably going to play the one drop and straight swap into the three. That super super hurts the deck. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely. But as you see there, with the Planet Vampire checking, checking the top seven, you know, it's just, it's such an amazing field card. It's pretty obviously staple in the uh, in the Red Brawler deck. It's the key turn one play that you want to see. But it doesn't look like he's got the, the Broly promo because he's thinking about what he wants to play. Yes, that might be a whiff on... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, but that's the risk that you play with, with Broly BR. Man, that's you know, a rough start. 
it, it, I mean, it's a rough start, but especially when you're going against Baby now, passing the turn to Baby when you don't get your um, chain established is, you know, they're going to be now on two energy. And you know that they're probably just going to pass to the opponent. So now whenever you try and re-establish the chain, their counterplays are live now. They've got two hey, energy yep. to play with. Counterplays are live, and with those counterplays being reduced by one, he's bottom decking something four or less. And he's yep. also restating energy after that. Yeah. Super strong. And if he is running the Goten as well, he could choose to bottom deck. But, yeah. real so realistically... Yeah. Does have a Servant card out there now, so that's a free... Like, that's a 15k swing that he can bottom deck. Uh, yeah, only on the Awakened side with the leader, but there are other cards. Most of the counterplay options do... Have servant, ah, uh, sorry, overlord, as well. Yeah, and I'm sure most people know in the chat, but um, just in case a counterplay uh, scenario comes up with the red Broly deck, the servant is uh, like permanent, so it can affect situations with counterplays. I know that some people do get confused on when servant comes into effect on a card, so it might be something just to remember, just in case. Uh, Red Brother gets a Unish and established if he's playing the Yomcha counterplay. Yep, and then with the... Mostly with the baby stuff too, when he is counterplaying, it is cost and not power, so it does matter. Oh, okay, so not saving the two power. energy. Oh, he's just going to stop the chain. Yeah, so I imagine he, ca he cancels the chain. He's going to cancel the chain out here. Also, because of playing the Geneba engine, he also gets the added ball to hand. Uh-huh. Which is which, really you know, good. We, we, yeah, which can just be used for his Janemba chain. It could be used for energy next turn, 5k combo. Just a free a free card out of your deck. Always good. Yeah, this is a um, little less sleep on this baby deck. He's tapping out here, which you, I, I don't remember the last time seeing a baby death tap out. Unless it was turn 7 with turning the tide, but like... Yeah, very true, very true. Not your typical charge and pass. Definitely the throwing red player, the red Broly he, for the loop. Yeah, he, he's he, yeah he's probably get, trying to figure out what the strategy is behind this. Obviously, he knows that he's going to want to play to the Janemba strategy, but obviously having access to other counter plays and negates, um, it you know it, it opens up a lot of opportunities for the baby deck. He's sort of um, thinking about how to react to the situation as he's forced to use a Raditz here, um, probably filtering, getting rid of some bunk in his hand for. Something that he can at least use next turn as he takes his second turn. So the Broly player obviously has an untapped two, so he's essentially got four energy to play with if he wants to go that route. I'm imagining he does since um, he's already on four life with his untapped two awakening. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes with it though. No, yeah, but as you can see too, life difference, uh, life difference here. We got eight on baby side and four on Broly. Yeah, like yeah. that's what I was saying about. Burning himself down, and it's playing exactly as that. Yeah, and the main thing to keen out as well is that the um, Red Broly player charged the KO Unison. So that looks to be his Unison of choice for the deck, um, rather than the Piccolo one drop, which a lot of baby players tend to use. Yeah, which I almost certain, one of, I know one of his additions of this Broly deck, he was using the Piccolo Unison. So that might be just yeah. There you go. Oh, oh, he plays the two. Oh, I think yeah. I, th I think it might be just like a tech for the kill, maybe a one or two of in the deck, just to fill yeah, some space. Yeah, just another one drop maybe to search for, just an extra chance of hitting it. Which is fair enough. But yeah, the the piccolo being great, being able to minus five k, um, is really really good. And obviously yep. his ultimate being able to, um, essentially bring out like the, usually the piccolo overrealm. The and Goku crit, crit 8, which can restand all the Pan, uh, the Fearless yeah, Pan. Fearless Pan is usually the main target there, giving everything double, double strike, strike, including crit. the leader. Yeah, all the crit, all the double strike. Yeah. Very deadly. That's what makes the deck truly scary there. Yeah, the, the, the Piccolo Unison really turned the deck up a notch when it came out. 100%. Yeah, it went it went under the radar, but as soon as some uh, some people started brewing with it and testing it, people really realized just how good the Piccolo Unison is. Also being able to get rid of one of the worst counters to the Red Brawler deck, which is a Black Mass Saiyan. 
just yep. being able to minus 5k that then get free removal out which the kale tends to uh, struggle with yeah that uh, that piccolo unison definitely kicked that deck up a notch definitely so turbo in the markers up here is or I mean you just see the power of it there it's already on four markers so I imagine next turn Ray's going to start swinging into the unison because he doesn't want it to get too big. But then obviously that's good for the Broly player because it gives him just another turn three energy to play with. Gives him turn a turn to breathe. But then again, this is turn three, and if he is if he does have Janimba pieces, he could just crit the hell out of him. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and that's how the game could go both sides. He's probably thinking to himself, maybe do I leave some energy up, or he could just have Violent Ray's in hand. Violent Ray's is could be a key card in this which matchup. which awakening and just passing turn i think that might be the case uh, well, that yeah. or a topo which yeah. would slow the janiba chain down quite a bit because ray does have a decent size hand but not enough to use the whole janiba chain to its full yeah. effect with a topo on board so with yeah with, with two energy for me definitely speaks out that he's either gonna hard cast two for the cyberman blocker the, the negate that gets our blocker or a topo because I feel like you can just tap out and because he has the unison for violent rays I don't think he needs to leave the energy up or he might just not have anything to get energy out of using yep. stuff in his hand so topo. But no we see he's topping two or... he does have a large hand yeah topo yeah. and he's ditching one do we get yeah there's no no ability to counter counter at this point for the blue baby yeah but he could counter play it he could and so that the, would the, the, the negate still goes off, but the uh... effect will not. No, it doesn't seem to have a response no for it. Okay, a baby deck not having a counter or a, a response. Oof. To be fair, the uh, Broly deck didn't have uh, <laughs> the the uh, one drop promo, so this may be Very just true. a thing of bad luck on both players' ends. Yeah, definitely. But it definitely opens the game up to what was, for me, very looking very one-sided for the baby player with Ray. Definitely opens the game up a bit more, which is what you want to see. You don't really want to see too many steamrolls. No, you want to which, see both decks going at it. Which I'm really hoping here that with time and everything that we can see a game three happen here. Yeah, definitely. Just ju just to see all the different decks be played. Yeah, because I I want to see AOD run in there because that leader I think looks amazing too. Yeah. I mean, again, bringing it up earlier, the uh, baby unison is also an agent of destruction, so it can be used to be bought out um, for three energy with the AOD leader. Just something to keep. Oh, an eye that's you, true. For you AOD players out there, if you want to play God Sealing Trunks as your uh, counterplay of choice, as he's oh. playing there, he's trying to get the chain going here. Yeah, that is the... That's not the promo one, I believe. No, that's the, the just, other one. Just the main set, yeah. Just the main yeah. set one. Which, yeah, if you play the promo, critting a life at four, that starts to become really dangerous. Yeah, you're really di you're getting a bit dicey there. So he's swinging with leader. He's drawing a card, trying to put some crit pressure on uh, Ray. With Ray not being awakened here, I imagine he just crits this damage. Doesn't really want to get rid of too many cards from his hand. Yeah, just crits the damage. Ooh, to Dimension Magic, and everyone want to see that yep. get critted. And here comes out the Bardock Double Strike. Ooh, and there's the hit yep. there. Two energy for hits due to the field card, so he doesn't have to pay the three. So um, that bounce gets bounced back, back and, and he gets to bounce, bounce something back one. out. Yep. Yeah. And then gets to bounce another card. Five or less, I believe. Which I think that hit in general for blue isn't that great, just for the pure fact of how many five drops are there really? Yeah, like, exactly. For boss yeah, exactly. cards, besides the Frieza, the Frieza, the red blue 100% overdrive, yeah, it deals yeah. with that. But in baby, playing it for two, like, come on. So he's playing the Yamcha in response. Which this would work now because it is played off a of skill, so yep. he can minus the hit as well with there, so. Is he choosing yeah. the hit and the bulla or the hit and the Mechicabra? The Mechicabura, mm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, get, it gets rid of a 5k combo, but 
maybe get rid of the i mean you can argue the fact of getting rid of the buller just to you know it's essentially then he can't use it to filter when his leader awakens to be fair it, it is a choice between getting the the buller draw or the Meki Kabura getting another ball to hand, which is another 5k and potentially another... Yeah. Which we know he still has one in hand from the first pull of it. Yeah. So, you know, he can re-establish the Broly, but he's had to waste an energy for it, which means that you can only pay one more red energy to get it into the 4-drop, which looks like what he's going to do here. Oh, he's taking it oh, back no. there. I heard taking a little bit from the judge there, but... Maybe, re maybe reconsider it. Maybe thinking, well, if I leave Tilt, maybe he has another Topo in hand to buy himself another turn. Okay, but at that point, when you're buying yourself another turn, you know, you might be able to keep the Piccolo alive, which seems to be what he's trying to do. He's just trying to keep stack the Piccolo up. Swinging it again, this time with the Yamcha. And there it is. There's the Buller, yep. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see which way he takes this forward. I think if he leaves two energy up, I think he's got a topo, and he's just thinking, well, I'll play under the topo. I'll get, I'll make sure the piccolo stays at six, and then we can just go balls to the wall. Yeah, and this, yeah, this is probably going to be a awakening turn for Baby as well. Can use the field card to crit, uh, basically, yeah. basically crit that life. He gets to bring it to hand, and then he has to put. Uh, one of his cards, I believe, in drop area or bottom yeah, deck. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it think might be bottom drop. deck. Yeah, it might be bottom deck just because of the servant overlord mechanic. It would make sense, yeah. I think. Yeah. So and he's playing. Well. We can see there he's playing the Zeno Super Combo. Most baby players tend to play the um, bottom deck draw two. The bottom G -G deck draw two combo. Yep. Well, I suppose the, the Zeno does have its uses of being able to be comboed and, you know, grab a piece of, uh, you know, grab a card from energy that you might need later on if he doesn't maybe see enough balls or Janemba pieces. You know, just use the Zeno and grab one back. Yeah, and he can combo that Zeno to grab that Zeno back, so it's keeping that Zeno safe as well. Exactly. And there's the Awaken drawing too. So it's going to be a really pivotal turn for the game. This this this, this turn overall is going to really dictate the pace of the match going forward. I really do believe that. So he's tapping two here to play down the vanilla Janemba 20k. Looks like we're going to start the chain off. Yeah, looks like we're going to be uh, we're going to be going to town, boys. And if he's got Senzu beans in hand, which he almost certainly has, you know, a blue player's always got a Senzu bean in yeah. the back pocket. Especially drawing two off that. Yeah, he's got a thick hand. Yeah. Plus, with the Senzu Bean as well, the power does carry over with the Evolve. Something to know. Yeah, the Chain Gang coming down. Yeah, the ch Chain Gang indeed. As we see Piccolo Jr. Just getting tons and tons of markers. Yeah, it's even got a nickel on there. Uh, this is great. Yeah. Or a quarter, I can't even tell, but... Blinding Light, of course. Yeah, the money card is indeed making money. And those two are getting comboed away. Yeah. He knows the chain's coming. Yep, there it is. Bewitching Blow. No answer for that, it seems. Nobody runs Denial of Hope anymore, so that, I think that'd be the only answer there. Yeah. Im imagine playing, paying energy for counterplays. Yeah, that'd be ridiculous. Who the hell would do that? <laughs> only has one die. Yeah, I had a, I had a feeling. And yeah, if if the Janimba chain can't finish it this turn, it will be really scary. Paying energy for counterplays. Yeah, that'd be ridiculous. Who the hell would do that? <laughs> Only has one die. Yeah, I had a I had a feeling. Big Bang. Yep. Which, That's it. Yeah. Ridiculously I mean, strong card. Yeah, he might just go a lot into this Janemba swing and think, you know, look at his hand. Well, I've got a D magic, and I've got three or four of the negates. And he it's might true. think that he's fine on that. But again, we, we never know. It, it, it is a baby player, so it's not it's not something that would be too too out there. Yeah, and the Red Broly player does have a lot of cards in hand right now, so I think 
on baby player's end, his thought process may be the same there, thinking, you know what, I'm just going to try to whittle down that hand, forcing him to stop my crits. And, yeah, there's the ball into the four drop. Yep. Now we got now we got options. So I have a funny feeling that the uh, J here on the right will just let him warp the Yamcha because he gets yeah, choice. Yeah, I imagine so, definitely. Not letting him have another energy. So he's going in for the swing here with the uh, with the Janemba. Yep, and like I said, right to the warp. So he's not getting the extra draw and untap. He has to do that, or that's just feeding even more into that. Yeah, and I mean, doing it on a Yomcha, you know, the Yomcha's already got its worth. It's got its counterplay effect off. It had a 15k swing, you know, for a free energy card. You know, it's fine to get rid of it. So he's dumping the Raditz super combo here. So that's two super combos, I believe, he's already used. Something to keep note of when, uh, it, just in case the baby player goes for to swing for game. Yeah, and it looks like the Red Broly player will end up with six cards after this. So his hand uh, is getting smaller. Yeah, he's, he's whittling through the resources, so Janemba is doing the work, and that's basically down to Ray's plan. When you're playing to like baby, you just want to out-resource your opponent and have an answer for every situation. Mm -hmm. As he's and paying one to is. evolve into the final form, the, the Janemba Zeno. Yep, we got the six drop there, and that will be dual strike uh, crit, uh, sorry, dual attack crit, and he uh, draws, draws, I two. think, two on the evolve. Yeah, draws two on the evolve. Yeah, consistent. Just, just draw two. Just draw yeah. two. Oh shit, chat. Consistent near 40 viewers. Yeah, that's. Damn. Hey, consistent. I'm glad the, the EU worked. It's alright. It, 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 don't worry about it, America. We, we got your back. We got yeah, your back. That better be a north in front of there, because most, most of the people are Canadian, including the streamers here. Stop no, getting twisted. No. Uh, sorry, Canada. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I was oh, joking no. around here anyway. But oh, so he's, he is keeping that crit. Oh, okay. So he's swinging with the baby leader first. I wonder what the reason is there. Maybe he's trying to get him to flush out another card. But if I was the red Broly, I might just take that there. Cause, oh, yeah. that's the double strike. Oh, no. Heroin's lineage. Oh, oh, heroin's lineage. Mm, so that's what it was. So, again, for a lot of people that don't really see, like, the true value of Heroin's Lineage, it's a great defensive card, but being able to use it offensively when you're going for the kill or to steal a key piece, it's just as good for one energy. Yeah. And for those asking how to sign up, we do these uh, once a month. Um, we do have other events as well, but you can check on the stream on the About Me, the DBSL Facebook page, as well as the Discord is the Discord we're running this off of right now. You can It's an invite link. Click on there. And, uh, yeah, we always, you always go on my YouTube channel. I always post promos for when the uh, fights are going to come out, but our next one will be in June. We don't have an official date for, uh, date for it yet, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we're trying to get more of these themes like EU versus NA. Hopefully we can get other stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. We want more people to come out to these, you know, they're always fun to watch. It's definitely been tons of fun commentating in. Hopefully that you've really been enjoying it in the chat. No. Yeah. It's. So the thing with Ray here, obviously, is that it's it's going to be hard, but he's going to really want to try and finish the game, like, or at least put, put a bit of pre pressure to try and finish the game because I don't think he's touched the Piccolo Unison yet. No, which is scary. He, sure, Red Broly is at a low hand size right now, but those get yeah. pulled from deck, so... Yeah. And granted, he doesn't really have a, um, a, a board presence with red cards. So it's well, not as bad, but you know you can still get a lot of um, you you can, you can still get a lot of value out of that Piccolo. Okay, he is comboing out of that. Wow, I'm surprised he actually did. I'm surprised he didn't just eat the crit there. So I can't quite tell how much life Ray's on. Can you tell how much life Ray's Ray on? Ray looks like he's on four life there. Hmm. So you've got a leader swing, which could be double strike crit with a pan. You could also break. You've got the Piccolo, the like technically pseudo overwhelm Piccolo that avoids blockers double strike. 
Um, again, I, I don't know if he runs the Goku Ape from like set three or four, the 15k crit, pop a red card and restand it. Yeah. And if he runs that, then that's, you know, double swing with that, especially with the double strike. Ah, uh, there's six markers gone. He's putting on a new... All right, so this is... We're, we're going to see how his turn's going to play out just by the two that he brings out here. So we're almost positive at a pan's coming out. Yeah, pan, double strike crit with the leader is what he's going to need, which... How does the leader get crit on the front side? Is it having a Broly BR out? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so he's going to need it if, he, one. if he's bringing Pan, he has to bring... Yeah, he has to bring the yeah. three drop out. So he's going with the original play that people did with the Piccolo, which was uh, the swap Broly to establish a swap chain, which is smart. He doesn't have one on board. And then, of course, Fearless Pan, which is the best card to bring out with the Piccolo Unison. So we're going to be having some really decent double strike crit pressure going on here. Yep, so... So we've got a 19k double strike, 3 drop Broly, and then we've got a 20k double strike crit leader. As, uh, the uh, the Broly is 19k with Servant, right? I believe so, yeah. So it should be 24 then from the Pan giving an extra 5k. Oh yeah, I, I completely forgot that the Pan even gives it 5k. Yeah. Gives oh, 5k, wow. yeah, 5k well, and double strike. That card... 20, yeah, the yeah. leader's 25k, yeah, yikes. Yeah, if you're getting set three, that's the if you still find a box set three, obviously probably better not to open it, collectors. But like that was the money card. Oh was yeah, getting yeah. a pan back, in back your in box. Day, yeah, yeah, that was expensive. I think they still they still are not uh, the cheapest uh, SR in the game. There, I think they're still above. Oh, at least Canadian, ten to fifteen. US perhaps as well. Oh, okay, taking the double straight crit there. Oh, we just, just noticed it. He just went straight for that one. I mean, Ray does only have two cards in hand, so he might have gone a, bit, a little bit too uh, too hard on his turn and not... I, I think he might have just forgot about the Piccolo Unison. Or didn't keep, a, you know, didn't, didn't keep too much attention on it, but it's going to be his undoing here. And yeah, Iratorm going with the set 5, thinking 11... Uh, you... Oh, was that? Yeah, just going for game there. Wow! Okay, we got a 2-0 there. And just right, just like that, just running through Ray there. Seemed to get a little bit unlucky there with the two unison in hand, but unfortunately that's just how the unisons go when you have a bunch of unisons in hand. Very unlucky there, but take nothing away there from the Broly player. No, Broly, that was... Yeah, I mean, to come back from where he was, it just shows the tenacity that, that, that Broly can have. Just out of nowhere, that Piccolo Unison, as we were saying earlier, just winning games on its own. Yeah, seeing the strength of the deck and strength of the pilot behind the deck there. And again, this was not the original matchup plan, but thank you, Jay, for filling in. I know if we're getting him here for an interview... Maybe, perhaps, if he wants one. Well, we wanted you to still, like, you, you put time and we still wanted you to be able to have a chance to play. So... Thanks for showing up and seeing you again, Yeah, perfect. Huge shout-out to both these players. They did throw on a Appreciate spectacle it. for us there. Yep, very true. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, chat, I hope you appreciate that it was not your typical baby deck. Not, not your typical resident sleeper baby deck. It was something a bit different. Yeah. Okay, so we got Jay here. I need to unmute him. Well, Jay, how did that feel, getting thrown in there, not knowing you were going to play today? Do I don't know if he still them, has me muted. Have them muted? To I have them you. now unmuted. Uh... Okay, how did it feel just going in there, not knowing you were going to play until about five minutes before the match started? Um, The way... I, I, I was a bit nervous, because I barely play on stream. Uh, but I felt bad for my opponent also, and uh, I totally feel bad for uh, Ray at the at the moment. 
Well, yeah, he obviously wasn't supposed to play against you. He was supposed to play against someone who didn't show up at all, which... Very unfortunate there. Um, so, what what was the third deck you picked? What was the third deck you were going to go in? Because I had no clue what the third one would be. I had a feeling Red Broly was the second. Yeah, so the third deck that I had in mind... Uh, I'm trying to, I was trying to find it during my uh, two-minute break while I was being thrown in. I put it away for a little bit, but it was supposed to be the Cell Surge with the Victory Strike package. Oh, uh, no. Well, glad you kept that one for the end. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. First game, Sin Shenron, go to sleep, whatever. We understand how that one went. You awakened above five life, and we understood it was pretty much over from there. The Red Broly match, you actually coming back. We didn't think that was going to happen. Was that yeah, purely I, I, from not him swinging on your unison? Like, is that you were hoping he was swinging to face there and just comboing out of it? Yeah, so I was hoping my unison would stay about six because it, that's, that was the only way that I was going to come back. I bricked pretty hard in my opening hand in turn one, turn two, not having the one drop uh, Brawly uh, mess me up, and then when he bounced the one that I had, uh, that messed me up too. So I was just hoping, uh, keeping my unison above six. And uh, playing the 3-drop from that, and if I need to evolve, I evolve. But he was down to 4 life, he, kept, well, he was taking life because I wasn't attacking him, and he wanted to self-awaken. And I was already at a point where I could self-awaken, uh, so... Yeah, I, I was just thankful that he didn't uh, get my unison. Very nice. I, I just had the, the one question when uh, during the Broly matchup. When he laid down with the baby leader and he charged the um, the Janemba and the ball, what was your thought process going through there? Was it a bit weirded out? Were you a bit took back? Or was it like, okay, I'm going to just make sure that I have enough combo to out-combo the Janemba swings and then kind of hit him on the crap bat with the Piccolo unison? Uh, so, yeah, when I saw the Janemba and the ball go down, uh, I had the... Uh... I had the after image technique in my hand from the oh, get-go. Nice. I wasn't sure what to expect. And I knew turn three, turn four would be devastating for me if I did not have this in hand for the uh, double attack on the 25k crit. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to combo out of uh, both of the attacks. And so no, that. no. That, yep. That, that, I mean, that's really good. I've seen a lot of uh, Red Broly players that have sort of dropped after image technique. But yeah, I mean, it's matchups like that. It can really just, you know, completely turn the match around. So yeah, definitely. Agreed. Uh, I was hoping to get to game three so I could pull this out. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would have been. I mean, I mean, oh, I, I would have enjoyed doing that. I, I, I always love the cheese of winning with victory strike. Of course. I, 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 I don't know how the chat would react to it, but uh, yeah, it, 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 unfortunately we didn't get to see stuff like the new pan being played, the swap, which is uh, which is actually quite fun to watch swap being played, but. Yeah, unfortunately, it was just a a, a two hour victory for you. But again, congratulations! It was it was quite fun to watch and commentate on. Uh, thank you. I, I also uh, note that uh, Ray will be getting the prizing because it wasn't fair to him to play against me. He wasn't even expecting to play against me, and you know uh, there was a little bit of a differential in uh, the decks that we played, and I felt I totally feel bad for him. Oh well, there we go, chat. Look at that. One well, absolute mm -hmm. champion, absolute hero. <laughs> but the Sin game wasn't a snooze mm -hmm. fast as Rosas. It was. Hey, <laughs> anytime I see Sin, it's out of here. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it was. It was better. It only went to turn four. Hey, you're you're going against the guy that played baby and made it not a snooze face. Uh, a snooze fest. I thought. I honestly, I thought turn three you were gonna pull out Celzino. Was that the plan there? Is that like? Because I seen it was gonna go Nova into a four drop into Sinshin, uh into Omega into. Celzino, was that the course of action, or did you not have the Celzino? I, I was trying to buff out any uh, god ceiling technique. Okay. I did not have uh, Celzino. Uh, that's why I did that, then I went to the 8 drop. Mm -hmm. Because if I had done the 8 drop first, I would have been out an 8 drop also. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. We're gonna move on. I am gonna show the logo through the screen. Thanks for filling in, Jay. Yep, thanks and... again, Jay. Congratulations. No problem. Team Brawley. Or Team Berserk. Let's go. Team Berserk, you don't even know your own team. What the <laughs> hell's going on? 